You'll get a little notification popping up that it's recording. Click yes. Hey everybody, I'm Jedi Hill, and as you know, we're working on building New Atlantis, a free independent country to supply an abundance of pure food, water, and energy. The energy being a big one, especially with what's going on in the world right now. So for the group, I, we've made progress in designs. You know, we're now looking at options for funding the project. You know, because initially we were looking at, you know, how long it'll take us to self-fund. What are the different ways you can raise funding? You have private, you have IPO, you have doing contracts with government, all these different type things. So personally, I'm going the private route first, which eliminates as much red tape as possible so we can just get it done. There's plenty of billionaires and other people. So and I'm about to show you a presentation of what we've been working on thus far. Give you an idea as I'll show you the strengths and weaknesses I know of in the plan. Um, I'd love your thoughts and input on it. Anybody you can help bring on board of directors. I need some serious A-listers. I know some people told me not to go for flashier politicians, but you know, I, I'd still like somebody like Dan Pena, or who knows, maybe even Mr. Trumper uh, getting in there involved to rile up the people. Because at least he wasn't one of the puppets, but that's neither here nor there. So give me just a sec here. Let me share my screen. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. So there we go. We're shrunk down. So this was the investor presentation. We figured the initial island we're building, the base of the island, along with the main generation facility, which will be a hydroelectric power plant combo with desalinization. So we'll be producing huge amounts of fresh water, being able to produce the saltwater brine that can then be used to extract minerals out. We can also be filtering the water as we go to, you know, take out plastics, things like that. There's any number of ways we can do things uh, that'll help improve the environment as we go. We're using the base, as you can see, the blocks on the thing are plastic um, and it's not just normal plastic it's going to be blended with antimicrobials uv blockers hardeners all these type of things to make it a more durable material that'll last the next 500 to a thousand years and it's all completely modular so if there's damage to blocks we can yank out old damage blocks put new blocks in so it, it's pretty cool, the overall setup. Um, and we'll get a little more into that, but this is the investor presentation. We're looking at funding. So if you know any Fortune 500 CEOs, retired, you know, any billionaires that, you know, think would really like this project, bring on board and we'll get there. So this uh, presentation, we're gonna go over the vision, the summary, you know, some of the market plane, what's going on, the solutions, you know, who our current competition is, what's going on in the world geopolitically, uh, current marketing sales plan, teams, milestones we're going to be working on, financial projections, needs, and the conclusion. So New Atlantis Developments, um, the reason we picked the name New Atlantis, I'm sure you're familiar with the original Atlantis, you know, from Plato and you know, stories all the way to your Disney movies. And in all cases, Atlantis was a far more advanced civilization than the rest of the world. And I have the same vision for New Atlantis, you know, being a safe haven for creators, kind of like Galt's Gulch from uh, Atlas Shrugged. Uh, so all you Ayn Rand fans, make sure you raise your hand, comment there as you're going through the video. Um, but yeah, New Atlantis, you know, a free state, and this is going to be multiple islands, you know, a country that's going to produce massive amounts of electrical energy, blue fuel, so blue gasoline that's carbon neutral, carbon negative. We're going to be extracting minerals, all kinds of fun stuff, and we'll get more into that in the presentation. So the vision of New Atlantis and 
actually, can I do, let's see. So let me change it to slideshow, get a little bigger screen here. Uh, hold on, I'm clicking to Great. Okay, there we go. Vision for New Atlantis. Let me move you up here so it's out of the way. And my honey's painting, and you get to see one of her paintings right here. Um, when I told her about New Atlantis a few years ago, this is what she saw in her mind. Um, they have the little dome housing here by the rivers that are coming out of the Great Pyramid. Um, and it's a cool little thing, the Clinic of Life or Life Clinic, where we'll be doing regenerative medicine. I, my eventual goals is imagine you can chop off an arm and instead of hooking robotics to it, we can actually 3D print the cells just like Lilu in the fifth element. So that, that's where the eventual goal for medicine is, be able to bring people from the brink of death, um, you know, extend life, improve health the whole nine yards, so. So New Atlantis, building life on the ocean. Now here, here's, here's the doom, gloom ah, stuff in the presentation. You know, we don't like to hear it, but these are things you need to be aware of, of how bad things are really getting. I'm, I, I've got sources down through the presentation that, you know, we put for all this. Um, so the facts that if any of you are active, accredited investors and want to see the full presentation with all the uh, quotes and stuff, you know, send me a message and I'll get it over to you. So by 2030, if the rate of climate change remains unchecked, almost half the world's population will be dealing with water scarcity. Now, I really, I'm not a huge climate change fear thing. Um, but it's pretty good for the left-wingers. It makes them happy. The bigger issue is, of course, pollution and the things like we're doing in the Ogallala Aquifer in the Midwest of the U.S., in the Middle East, in India. We are drilling down and exhausting our groundwater supplies. And you will start seeing more places go Wells go dry, you know, worse food population. That's why, you know, eight, that was the UN's, I believe that said the 840 million people are forecast to go hungry by 2030. Um, now you already know the soaring energy prices, they're insane and they're only gonna get higher. I and mean, we have the oil, we could pump it and fix it, but politics, politics and egos come into play and, you know, they don't care about the common people like you and me. So they know what they're working on right now is demand destruction, creating another Great Depression, all from the made up lack of resources. And the only way to end the war between the haves and the have nots is to raise a minimum level of standard of living for everybody on the planet. So this um, 840 million people forecast to be hungry. This was before the quotes on the war in Ukraine. Um, right now, based on how bad things are, if everything stopped today and they started producing things, we might only have a 15 to 20% drop in calories globally. So if you have food for five people, boom, 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 five people, one of them's starving. One out of every five is starving globally if things stop right now. If it doesn't stop in the next month and we get past planting season in May, boom, within a year, 40%. And those are conservative estimates. And those of us in the US, you know, one of the main food producers in the world that can produce enough food to feed the whole world, we're gonna get hit with higher prices and it won't be as much food scarcity, but what you eat will likely change because we can't import everything we need. Uh, countries are being very restrictive. So it, it's going to be interesting to see where things are going. And that's in the short term. In the long term, it's going to get worse if we don't make some major changes. And right now, in addition to the soaring end prices, the world's on track to run out of sufficient oil supplies to meet its demands needs through 2050. 
meaning we're still going to have some oil pumping, but with population increases and evolving, you know, the need for energy, the need for oil is going up and we're not going to be able to produce it. That's why even Elon Musk is saying, turn on the nuclear power plants, kick up their energy production as much as you can here for the short term. Um, by 2100 sea level rise, we'll reduce land mass six to 10% globally. Um, that was going with the one and a half degree C they were talking about and how you're gonna get a foot higher water over the next hundred years. And one foot of water doesn't seem like that much, but when you add that over an ocean, that means the waves and things, the ranges is going to fluctuate much more, especially in bad storms. Um, now in this pre presentation, you'll see how New Atlantis will build the foundation to provide the world with more oceanfront places to live, an abundant supply of pure water, renewable energy, you know, electricity and the liquid blue, blue fuels we talked about, precious metals, aquatic farming and habitats to improve fish and wildlife in the ocean, building a blue economy. Because face it, two thirds of the earth is sea and lots of the main parts of the ocean are considered like desert. And when you're building civilizations on the sea, you actually produce new habitats where when you're building civilization on land, you're destroying habitats. So for the initial first island of New Atlantis, we have four main locations of where to build it. The one is in between the east coast of the US, Bahamas and Bermuda to be further out, but still accessible to the mainland. Um, you have one in the Azores Plateau, which those three dots is just itty bitty little islands you see from Portugal. Uh, if we can buy them from Portugal, that's awesome. Uh, that'll be for some other stuff, but it's supposedly the location where the original Atlantis was. So why not put the new Atlantis out there somewhere too? Uh, the third one is between the tips of Brazil and the west coast of Africa. Uh, this is a major trade route for the shipping. And then the last one is between Sri Lanka, the tier of India, and Indonesia. This is the busiest shipping route in the world. And being an island nation, as you'll see in some of the next pictures, the shipping can be a really big thing. So that's we'll see where geopolitically and the investors want. These are the sites I am open to based on, you know, waves being outside the EEZ. And those who you who don't know what the EEZ is, that's the exclusive economic zone that goes from 200 miles from the border of any country. So that is their exclusive zone for fishing, mining, things like that. You're, anybody's allowed to sail through it, but, you know, it's still their territory. So that's why we pick these locations as we go. So aerial sketch into Atlantis, let's move Anichka and myself down here as we're talking about paradise versus oblivion. So this is a hand sketch. I know, I know, I know it'd be so much better if it was 3D rendered. And if you are a 3D render artist or you have any friends who are, you know, please send them my way, get them a comment on this so we can do this. I, I looked into the Blender software and God, the complexities on how to do this, to even use the software would take me months to learn. So this is one of those we'll have to pay. Um, overall size on this, we did it based on a $2 billion based on some family offices where we're hitting the normal range. Um, I would like to expand it larger. It just all depends on how we line up funding. But the minimum size I can make an island is about a half a mile by one mile. So each of these blocks is about one foot in diameter and they'll be 10, 20, 30 feet long, depending on uh, where they're at in the island and what we need to do to support and keep the buoyancy, displacement, all those fun things. So part of the mile length and why it's a rectangle instead of a more octagon 
is this is also like a mobile shipping port, as you can see on the one side of the diagram. Uh, well, let me move my mouse. So over here, you know, these giant shipping container barges can load and unload. Uh, across the top, you have the airport. So this would be for guests, for investors, you know, trading, shipping things in we need. Um, say we have somebody injured beyond what we could treat at our clinic or hospital, we can fly them into neighboring countries. You know, it, it leaves the ability open. Um, tourism, especially medical tourism, will be one of the big things as it grows. Um, up here, we have the different hangars and things. Uh, we were using Worthy Domes because of the dome shape and they're bomb resistant, which is kind of cool because, you know, we want to be able to defend ourselves, you know, from pirates and things like that. So the fact you could shoot off some C4 just out on the outside of the building and not scratch the paint is a kind of cool feature. Uh, not to mention, you know, if we do get any giant 100 foot waves, it's just going to move around them. The way these locks are lined up, um, there will be gaps in between them. So it's like a metal grate. So if you have a wave coming in, it's going to reach the grate and just go whoosh and lose all its power going in as it drops down to gravity. Okay. Center of the island, the big thing, you know, we haven't touched. Tosh about that is the generation facility. Uh, it'll produce the electricity and that's also going deep down into the water using the deeper pressures of the ocean as you go further down to move the water up uh, with a few little tricks. And at the same time, you know, we're using that higher pressure. We can press the pipes down. Now we can do passive desalinization, which is removing the salt and minerals from the water so we have fresh water. So on the one side, you have water outlets that can then be pumped through the island. And you know the actual one will have fresh water coming out in multiple directions for you know, all the housing and everything else. Um, the other way comes out with the brine, which is a heavier, saltier water with lots of minerals in it. And we'll be using electrolysis and various methods of, oh God, there's so many fun ones, filters, uh, different ways you have like little sponge-like things that will soak up different minerals and attract it. Um, you know, putting the electrodes will pull the ions out of the water and stick it to poles so we can get the lithium for electric batteries, gold, magnesium, uranium for energy, you know, all this fun stuff. So there's a lot of value on that's what's gonna make the islands make money so we can actually end up doing this long term and you know bring you investors on and we'll get more into the money because i know when you heard gold I, I heard a gold silver i heard a few gold bugs there in the audience i know you're there and and yes uranium with all the geopolitical stuff right now russia cutting off our supply or their supply of uranium to us you know it's good and we should be able to mine it cheaper than they can actually mine digging into the ground. So more economical, higher profit margins. So that'll be on the first stuff. Um, we'll also have, you know, of course, the docks and stuff down towards the bottom, section off plots for private housing that people can buy. Um, as the island gets bigger, again, it's all modular, so we can section it out and have other ones that like link to the main island and we put power cables and water. This is just, you know, your base power plant heart to the island to make everything work so we can grow it out infinitely if we really needed to. So with the water coming out, again, the water electrolysis that produces blue hydrogen, meaning no carbon used to produce it. You know, it's carbon neutral. And when you're splitting the hydrogen and oxygen apart, one of the side effects is we increase the oxygen levels in the air, which improves the health of the people around and globally there. We're also going to use giant uh, vacuums is a way to do it to suck the carbon dioxide out of the air. Put those compressed. So now we have carbon dioxide and hydrogen. 
Well, with the carbon dioxide and the hydrogen, we can fuel synthesize to make natural gas, oil, gasoline, except it doesn't have the nitrogen, the sulfur and things like that that can make the harsher chemicals. So it's a cleaner burning fuel and it's carbon neutral, carbon negative for the whole cycle. So the power plant's the real key to making it all work. Uh, the Life Clinic. This is my honey's beautiful thing. Wave for him, honey. So the Life Clinic, that's where we're gonna work on the regenerative medicine, have various labs. And that's the basis of how the island will be at first. And if we can get it up to a mile by a mile with a little more funding, We'll have much more room for housing. Um, here as it's sitting, we're looking at the island could probably house five to 10,000 people max as a style for the smaller one, but there's multiple islands. And you know, if we're close enough, we can take electricity cables and run them to the nearby countries and sell the electricity. I mean, there's so many fun options here to make money. So, uh, going for the independent country, of course, we don't want taxes. So for our summary, the New Atlantis offers a way to protect humanity's future, creating new oceanfront land for housing with underwater aquatic farming, shipping ports, marinas, private airport, you know, generation facility that produces the hydroelectric, the fresh water and brine for minerals. Um, the labs for exponential scientific advancement because we're not going to have all the normal governmental red tape. We can let the true scientists experiment and build things to improve mankind. Like imagine if the real Nikolai Tesla had been given funding and able to create and just build without, you know, the greedy people blocking the way. Uh, so there's that, the medical tourism with the life clinic. Oh, and of course, a new country that will be a tax haven for wealthy investors around the world. I knew think Swiss banks help people hide their money. This is going to be great. You know, no income tax, no property tax. Well, yeah, no need to hide it because there's no extradition to other countries. Um, so problems we're solving with the islands. Um, recycled plastic waste in the ocean, you know, fixing the lack of water globally, food improvements, because, you know, you can grow underwater as you're improving the ecosystems, you're having everybody living there is into the cycle of life and producing more fish. It's going to be amazing when you get into it. Um, of course, we're creating new land and housing because everybody says the problem with land is especially oceanfront land or waterfront lands, nobody's making any more of it. Well, now we are, we're making new real estate and we'll be able to sell off, you know, blocks that can be assembled to house any types of buildings, structures, anywhere in the world as another way to help make money back for the investors. So um, metals for industry, of course, and our unique success factors is, you know, we're creating more waterfront land, as I just mentioned creating sustainable housing, generating self-sustaining fresh water and energy supply that will have an abundance to be sold for extra revenue, building self-sustaining communities on the ocean, tax-free enterprises in international waters. So thus far, you know, we've launched this plan a couple of years ago. We've designed the interlocking blocks and all set up, as you can see here, some of our earlier stages in the blocks where they didn't quite interconnect, didn't lock in right, right, and improve to we now have something that is modular and scalable. Uh, and these blocks at full size are gonna weigh like a hundred pounds. So easily two men can pick it up and just whoosh, whoosh, whistle while you work. Working on the railroad, as it were. And she's laughing at me because I say, actually sing those uh, throughout the day to keep working on things. So the market pain. Let's see. So 
overpopulation leading to lack of resources. And it's not really a lack of resources, it's a mismanagement of resources. So you on the upper level, Council 13, all those fun things, um, Rothschilds, Rockefellers, whoever you might be that own the central banks, you know, you just mismanaged your cattle. And I hate to compare people to cattle, but that's what they've been doing. So we need to raise the quality of living for the people, um, which will stop us from, you know, degrading down to war by fixing the made up lack of resources. It's just a, not a lack of resources, it's merely a mismanagement. So with the overpopulation, you know, the wars we've talked about, as you've seen going on now with Ukraine and the U.S. having declared war on Russia covertly by just sending Okay, we're still there. Momentarily issue, let's go back to screen share and share. Okay, so we lost our screen share just in case we uh, get here in a moment. So, you know, if you're one of the investors that jump in on this before we go IPO and international, you know, you can see with the global energy um, is gonna increase to five trillion a year by 2030. Just the renewable energy markets, which is your solar, wind, hydro, which hydro is so underutilized. It is so much more powerful than the wind. Iron is just, and unlike sun, that's only there part of the day, you know, the waves are more consistent, which is better for a power grid because it's 24 seven. So rock on wave energy. Uh, that's why Niagara Falls and other dams, and we should be able to produce at least half the power of Niagara Falls just with a smaller island, and we could increase, maybe even be comparable to Niagara uh, for each individual island. So great projects, but it's projected to reach almost two trillion a year for the renewable energy, 1977.6 billion by 2030. Um, under current trends, demand for water will exceed supply by 40% in 2030. That's why I said, you know, half the world is going to be dealing with water scarcity and desalinization is our only option to fix it in the short term. Uh, the big problem with normal desalinization that you're seeing in California and the Middle East is you're just dumping the saltwater brine right back into the ocean, which throws off the salinity and kills the surrounding wildlife because you're getting too salty, where what we're looking to do is one, we're out in the open ocean that, you know, better circulation. Two, we're extracting as much of the minerals and things out as we can. So ideally, we're going to be almost identical with salinity, salinity going back into the waters, what came out, except the water will be cleaner less harsh chemicals, things like that will have all been filtered out. So we're actually improving the ecosystems as we do this. So um, government expected to spend 200 billion per year on upstream water supply. So not only do we have the renewable energy, we can make money. We get to make money off the water as prices go, which is kind of cool. Get to make it better and make a profit. Um, see up here, my the underwater farms, one of my honey's drawings for the idea for the coins for New Atlantis. Um, so our solution is, you know, you're building ocean, floating ocean front land, which gives you the spots to anchor all these things for all these fish and things, clams and everything else we can grow to feed millions and billions of people over time as it grows. 
um, building the generation facilities to produce renewable hydroelectric energy, you know, ending our need on most of the fossil fuels, but yet we're still producing blue fuels so we don't have to get rid of our cars and transitions quickly. So we don't have to do as much strip mining and, you know, uh, the mobile shipping ports, these supply chain issues, congestions, like the more of these we build, like you look in the Cali, they're stuck in one port where if you unloaded them onto a New Atlantis vessel or New Atlantis mobile hub island, it can unload out of the big ship, load individual cargoes onto smaller ships and spread out throughout the entire coast. That way you don't have truckers and everything else to bottleneck points that are you know, not safe from a strategic point. I, if I was military myself, you know, those points would be exactly where you hit, where if you can spread it out, harder to hit a wider target. So we're creating new housing on the oceans that floats as sea level rise. So where the rest of the world is losing land, we're creating land. Um, aquatic habitats mentioned, and then eventually we're gonna be creating our own currency um, we talked about back in by the GDP, you know, the amount of energy we're producing, things like that, and having nearly unlimited power that's just continually running, we should be able to reduce the cost of anything manufactured on the island. Now, here's the fun part for all you gold bugs. This is the chart of the precious metals and other materials in the seawater. The ones I want to bring you to, okay, this dotted line da, 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 da. on the right side, the blue is what is already economically feasible. On the left side is what's been economically challenging to extract. Means we have technologies to extract it. It just doesn't make financial sense to extract it. Um, here on the left, you have the concentration lower down is a higher concentration, up higher is a less concentration. So as you can see, the gold is on the lower concentrations, but it's a very valuable metal, so it doesn't take a lot of it to be worth something. Um, you know, so lithium is right here, just to the right of the line. Um, research I've been seeing out of the Western US and some of the UK on this one was about $5 in electricity to produce either a pound or a kilo of lithium. So that gives you an idea. You're having to use the electricity and things to suck the metals out. Um, iodine, your boron, your potassium, your magnesium, your calcium, your sodium, uh, your rubidium. I think it's rubidium. Um, but the important one, the uranium here, it's right on the economic line uh, from Japan. I was seeing they got it down to $130, or sorry, $140 a kilo. And the market at the time was 130. So it's not quite there, but because we are producing so much electricity, we get to move this line way to the left, right about here for where you're hitting this MG as your diagonal in, in the economically challenging. So we can get gold, silver, you know, your copper, your aluminum, your um, nickel, your iron and industrial metals out of things. So that's really cool on that. So competition, so let's cover up our advantages. So as you can see, pictures on the bottom, we got China and Dubai. Uh, the left one's a conceptual one for China, then one they've actually built, and then we have the palm in Dubai. Now what they're doing is they're taking shallow water, dredging around it and just pumping the dirt in. So they're just moving the soil. They're not actually building true, like they are artificial islands, but they're not floating islands. So this is how they're trying to claim. Um, so our customers, you know, they're solving their pain from, and our customers, to clarify here before I go any further, is everybody in the world, everybody that drinks water, eats food, or uses energy, is a customer of New Atlantis. So wars to gain resources, you know, e.g. the Russian Ukraine, um, we'll see China gobbling Taiwan back up here in the next six months to a year. I don't know, I'll put beds on that one. Um, oil, gas, coal, nuclear facilities to provide electricity. 
you know, you build homes on limited land, you're using the old styles of building methods that are very inefficient, expensive. Uh, and the Worthy Domes and other things we're doing can be formed in a factory and you can have a house assembled in a day. I, yeah, it's just really cool and mind boggling how things work. Um, you know, there's also some attempts by Japan and Maldives and various seasteaders to design floating structures. Um, some shout out to ocean builders, the Atlantis Sea Colony and, and um, Freedom Haven and some of the other fun ones for the people I know. Uh, but most of them, with the exception of Freedom Haven, Freedom Haven still trying to do a little community. Most of them are trying to build one-off houses or like underwater hotels and things like that. So what all the other sea setters are doing are things that will integrate very well with New Atlantis, serving as the host country for people to have a greater level of freedom. So China, Dubai, as you can see, the islands below construct on the reefs are competitive advantages. We're creating the new country on the open sea, providing sustainable housing. The structural base of the island consists of simple interlocking blocks that can be scaled to create as large a structure as needed to support the islands. Uh, the full-size island, the goal, like this is just the stage one for the smaller heart of an island. Uh, the giant center one I want in the Azores will be approximately six miles in diameter. So 72 times the size of what I showed you today. And we will have a full-size replica of the Great Pyramid in the center, working with the water pump to spread the water out in four rivers across the island. Uh, make it look really cool. We'll coat it in gold, all kinds of fun stuff. I, I know Donald would love seeing a pyramid in gold. Um, <clears throat> produce nearly limitless hydroelectric power, uh, which significantly reduces, reduces the cost of desalinization. Us, it's passive, so we're not even using any of our power. Uh, but we get to use the ele extra electricity for the mineral extraction factories and all the stuff. Uh, of course, you got the Jedi as the chief engineer, and we're building a free society. You know, this safe haven for inventors and all this fun stuff. So you, you can't change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. Buckmaster Fuller, he's... Really cool guy, look into some of his stuff. He's the one who designed the geodesic dome and unlocked lots of secrets of how the universe works. So our sales plan, there you can see some pictures of the worthy domes covered in grass. Uh, so you can still make pastures on the island, things like that. We'll have weight, we can dredge up dirt from the bottom if we need to. Um, so marketing sales plan, develop partnerships with, you know, Worthy Domes, various realtors, developers, you know, construction people, farmers, fishermen, various countries to do block manufacturing. I, I these are just some, and, you know, if you think of other partnerships we're gonna need right away, you have connections to these partnerships, you know, please bring them in because we're building the safe haven for you. Like this is a world for the creatives, the creators and the givers, not the takers, so. Uh, we will build marketing campaign to include uh, release of my next book, The Revival of Freedom, Building New Atlantis to End Poverty, Pollution, and Politics. Uh, the goal is to have the book out before 11-11-2022. I've already found the best people for marketing this to make sure we can get it to a Wall Street Journal top 10 give us various TV experience so we can bring more smaller investors once we get it closer to the IPO stage. Um, run, of course, you know, social media ad campaigns. Once the book's out, talking about New Atlantis, we will also want to create a New Atlantis documentary as we're building the first sections of the island and a more Marvel style movie. So future base it, and show how we can come in, you know, these hurricanes in Puerto Rico, Thailand, Philippines, wherever it case to be, you know, people lose their power grids, all this stuff. We can roll our islands in closer because they're navigable, movable islands uh, with the permission of the other country, of course. Pipe in fresh water, electricity, you know, give them food and be the ultimate, ultimate humanitarian projects so um then creation of a new atlantis metaverse game 
Uh, that also go with the currency and the tokenized so people can play the game to earn tokens uh, for the new Atlantis currency. Also with the metaverse game, we will have it as onboarding for new citizens and workers and things like that. So you can train in your various skills, like we'll have gun ranges that people can park because, you know, instead of just having like the second amendment in America, where you have the right to bear arms, we need to take it to the next level further. You are responsible. You don't just have the right, you're responsible to be able to defend yourself and defend those around you who are weaker. So we need to build a country based on strength, not weakness. Uh, guest speaking, national syndication, TVs, podcasts, radio shows, Joe Rogan, if you're out there, anybody got a connection, I'd love to talk on him. Uh, Brian Rose, London Real, awesome things for entrepreneurs. Um, you know, getting featured Forbes, Entrepreneur, other business magazines. These are the things we will do to build the awareness of New Atlantis and increase the funding. So here's where I know we need your help. I know the picture's horrible. We'll get better pictures of me. And of course, my honey, she looks beautiful no matter what. Um, you know, we're utilizing a flat based structure where, you know, everybody reports to me at first. Um, you know, as we add more managers, we expand, but I'm looking for board members, like I mentioned at the beginning, a retired Fortune 500 CEO or a billionaire. We need some A-team. I already have the lawyers lined up that we can pull in, you know, accountants, things like that. Those are the easy ones. We just need someone famous enough and with repute in the billionaire circle with the ultra wealthy to help get this funded quickly. So if you know anybody, send them my way. Okay, there we go. So milestones, almost done, almost done. So uh, past, you know, we designed the structure of the island and the block prototypes for foundation. I've already spoken with various manufacturers and gotten some quotes on things that we can actually build uh, to get the smaller prototypes in the water. Uh, those first stages, we're looking between five to 10 million to get that. Now we were looking at, this is with the bigger funding, you know, if we had large chunk of money at first, like the 2 billion, you know, just acquire the factory, retrofit it to do nothing but build blocks um produce and assemble the first 100 by 100 platform on the open water to show how well it works and buoyancy which are gonna be really cool with those uh you know on a typical 20 foot platform only with a house on it only about five feet should be in the water so you still be out of the water like 15 feet have to have stairs and ramps to get up to a house uh which is kind of cool it gives you that cliff side view uh, over the next couple of years, building the island to at least a mile long by half a square mile, starting the marinas and shipping ports to bring in revenue. Um, we were figuring, I'll, I'll get into those next slide, some of the numbers, start building the parts for the generation facility, uh, assembling the turbines, 30-year power plant, build tunnel approximately 500 deep in the center of the ocean. That's how we're gonna get into the deeper pressure, letting that push up. Um, build a runway for airports, start underwater, seafood farms, deploy turbines, the fourth year into tunnels, start assembling desanitization plant and turn it on during the fifth year. You know, And then once it's on, we start selling water, energy, minerals, and medical tourism, all this fun stuff. So expenses, first year, Spend 250 million to buy a factory and all the manufacturing equipment to start the blocks, launch first platform. Year two, 450 million scaling up production, growing island, because by then we should be able to just run the factories nonstop. Uh, year three, 500 million to keep enlarging the island and start building the combo power and desanitization plant. And we did have a spreadsheet that breaks this down uh, more for those of you who are accredited investors and you know have a few hundred million lazy money sticking around. Um, year four, you know, 550 million, get the airport built, have all the employee housing there. And we'll be doing employee housing as the island smaller and just increasing as we go. Nice part of those worthy domes, we can pick them up with a forklift and move them if we need. Um, year five, finish the hydroelectric power plant with 250 million, airport, start bringing in 
you know, new investors who got to see actually get to set foot on the island, automatic um, citizenship for the ones who are beyond a certain level of donation with other perks we'll figure out in the future. Um, you know, after year six, we'll go for additional funding to build the CO2 collectors, electrolysis, so we can start producing our own gas and oil. So in the next five to 10 years, we can have a way to end or the path to end the dependence on drilling and that around the world. So income, of course, at the beginning, there ain't going to be nothing. It's just the way it is. You're building something new. True seed startups grow let the plant grow till it blooms. So by year three, we'll start making 25 million a year revenue through the terminal handling charges uh, or THC using 200 per shipping container unload, 2,500 containers a week estimated. And compared to like Port of Los Angeles and some of the other ones, this is a small fraction of what they do. So the potential revenue is higher. I was trying to use everything in low-end conservative estimates, so there is potential for more. Um, by year four, you know, not only have we built the base of the island, we've got the underwater as well. So you'll be getting all the stuff from the shipping containers and the docking at, at sea, and you'll start getting stuff from selling the seafood uh, globally that's produced on the island. Year four, increasing the yearly revenue to 150, or sorry, year five, because we just did year four, uh, 150 million from starting the water, energy, and mineral production. And like I said, these are very, very conservative estimates. Um, it could be significantly higher, especially with the prices of metals and everything going up because this was all priced out a few years ago. Um, year six, 500 a year million revenue. So we're looking at around 2 billion to build it. By year six, we're getting a quarter of that money back a year. Um, ramping up the metal extraction, shipping water to drought areas. I, we can actually produce enough water. We can make the Sahara Desert a tropical paradise again if we really want it. Uh, year seven and eight, at least a billion year revenue from extracting the gold, the silver, the lithium for batteries, the uranium, all this type of stuff. And uh, like I said, if prices go up, that could go. So by there, you're moving year seven and eight, you know, the bigger investors will be getting their chunk from the stock dividends. And everybody that's invested in the island, you know, has their little fractional share ownership where they're actually getting dividends from their country instead of paying their country taxes. Isn't that pretty cool? Um, here's nine, five billion a year revenue because now we'll also not just be producing the minerals, the water, the electricity. We're now producing our own synthetic gas and oil. Year 10, you know, full capacity for oil production, gas, the minerals, 10 billion a year. So 10 years to five times your overall capacity, uh, make that a yearly revenue for life. That's the potential for the early investors in the island. And conclusion, we, we've reached a crossroads, people. We've reached crossroads. You're here. Are we going to produce a free world where we get unity through specialization and everybody being individuals and just who they are? Or are we going to have the one world government under communism you know, the social credit systems and all these things where you have top-down complete government control. So we can build it from the bottom up and be free like a fountain and everything flows, or we can be treated like an ant colony where you have a few overlords dictate your every move. So I'm personally, you can guess my side on the freedom. So imagine ending the war between the haves and the have-nots, building a world where everyone has an abundance of pure water, food, and energy. And that's the difference. With the free world, we can build abundance. With communism, you are always going to have shortages. Um, my honey will be able to tell you about that in her new book coming up because she actually came from communist Russia, got to see the Berlin Wall fall when she was younger, and got to see the different things here in America. So 
we, we've seen how it started to turn towards communists here in America, and it's a very sad thing. <sighs> Land of the free, and we're going to make this one truly free with New Atlantis. So building New Atlantis positions us to build new oceanfront land, housing safe from rising sea levels. So the storms and things are going to get worse. And this is actually one of the best hopes of preserving humanity as a whole. I know my buddy Elon, when I finally get to talk to him, he wants to take us to Mars, and I agree with him. But I think there's going to be enough destroyed before we could get to that point that we need bases of operation on the seas before we go to the stars. So it's from the seas to the stars is where we're going, Elon. You're just trying to skip a step. This will get us here faster. So create a world powered by renewable carbon neutral energy, steady supply of fresh water, more food through creating aquatic habitats and underwater seafood farming, as well as supply the world with precious and industrial metals without harmful strip mining. So we improve the environment. We unleash the full potential of freedom, the innovation, things like that we can get. We give you a safe haven for the wealthy investors and those who just don't want government interference in their lives. You know, if you know anybody that can jump in on this, you know, please send me a message, write in the comments, we'll get back to you. Because this is the way to preserve humanity. It is our counterance our counteraction to the UN Agenda 230. They're trying to control you and we're trying to set you free. So choose who you want to be. Do you want to be a slave or do you want to be free? This is Jedi signing off. May the force be with you always. <laughs>